Welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your own boxers. It has a button fly, customizable elastic waist, and it has a narrow hem at the bottom. So let's get started and show you what you're going to need in order to complete this project. All right, so let's take a look at what we're going to need in order to make our boxers. The first thing is we're going to need some fabric. And for this fabric, I'm just using a lightweight fabric. And it's about a yard and an eighth, so a little bit over a yard some all-purpose matching thread. I have a small button, uh, I think this is about 3 eighths of an inch in width, some one inch elastic, and you need at least enough to go around your midsection. You're gonna need some straight pins and also a safety pin, a fabric marker or chalk, something to mark your fabric with, scissors, and then of course the pattern pieces which you can download on our site. So let's talk about what we're gonna to need to cut out of our pattern pieces. So here is my fabric and it's 44 inches in width and I have it folded in half. The first thing I'm gonna cut out is going to be my back piece. So this is the boxer's back. And the half inch seam allowance is already built into these pattern pieces. So you don't need to worry about adding seam allowance. And I'm just gonna lay it, making sure that my grain line is going parallel with my fold line, which is down here. And then I'm going to pin with my pins going perpendicular, or I'm sorry, parallel to the edge of the pattern pieces. So for my back, I'm gonna make sure that I cut it with it folded in half because I need two pieces of this. So if I just pin it, cut it out once, then I get two of them with it folded in half. So after I do the back, I'm then going to take my fabric and I'm going to unfold it. So now we have a single layer of fabric and I'm going to cut out the front left side, and this you only need to cut out one. That's why I'm unfolding it. So I'm going to pin it, cut it out. Don't forget to cut out any notches that you see here. See, I have a couple of notches here, and I have one here, and I also had some on the back. And then on the other side, I'm gonna cut out the right side. And again, don't forget to cut out any notches. So I'm cutting one out of the right side front, one out of the left side front, and then two of the back piece. So again, here are my notches here. So once you get it cut out, make sure that you keep your pattern pinned to your pieces because then we're gonna talk about the marks that we need to transfer to our fabric. When I cut out my front pieces, my left side and my right side, I kind of like to lay them like this. So this part is the fly, it's facing each other, and I will have the fabric right side up. That way I make sure that the sides are going correctly for when I cut them out. So you just wanna pay attention to that. So next we're gonna talk about marks. So there are some marks on our front pieces that we need to transfer to our fabric pieces. I have these big circles here. I have a small circle here, which is button placement buttonhole placement, and then you'll see these lines here. This is gonna be a fold line, so you definitely wanna transfer that to your fabric pieces, so it's all there. To do that, all I do is I take my straight pin, I poke it through my mark that I'm gonna transfer, I lift it up, grab my chalk or my fabric marker, and right where I see my pin is going into my fabric, I'll just make a little mark there, or a big mark since it's a big circle. So I would do that for all my pieces, including the buttonhole right here. I just go ahead, place a straight pin on top and a straight pin on the bottom, and then I know where to draw my line in between those two pins. So once you have everything cut out and marked, we're ready to get started in sewing our boxers together. The first step is we're gonna take our two front pieces, which I have here, and right where you have your big mark, so your big circle, which was on the pattern piece, we're gonna stitch just a regular stitch, one inch above the circle. You're gonna go right through the circle and stop one inch below it. So it's gonna be a two inch span that you're gonna do a stitch on this side and you're gonna do it on this side. So we're not stitching these two pieces together. You're keeping them separate. We're just trying to reinforce this area with those stitches because this is where we're gonna be working and we wanna make sure that it's gonna be strong enough for us to clip into and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead, take it to the machine, and again, individually, I'm not stitching them together. I'm gonna to stitch one inch above the circle, stitch down, and stop one inch below that mark right there. The same thing on this side. 
So again, I'm just doing a regular with stitch and you really don't have to worry about doing a back stitch. Here's my circle here. So I started an inch above it and then I'm just gonna go an inch below that. Next, you're gonna take your two front pieces and you're gonna lay them right side to right side, matching up this little curve area right here. So I'm gonna take this, flip it over to this guy. And this should all line up. So I have this curve and the notches are lining up. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this area because what I'm going to do is stitch starting from the circle area and stopping at my notches here, doing a half inch seam allowance. So then the two pieces are gonna be attached right in this area right here. When doing my half inch seam allowance, could go ahead and make sure I do a back stitch here so you don't want it to come out and you're just very carefully going to go around the curve so it stays a curve and this is going to be part of our crotch seam after you've done your seam you're definitely going to want to clip a notch right in this corner right there right to your stitching line you're not going to cut your stitches you're just cutting to them so I'm just creating a little inverted notch like that. Then you're gonna go to your machine. So we have our fly here, which is the shorter one. And then we have the under flap here, which is the one that extends. So on each of these, you're gonna do a regular stitch down the side and down the bottom. And you're gonna do the same thing on the side. So down this side and over. And you're just gonna do it a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And you can go ahead and make that a regular stitch and don't forget to back stitch because we're gonna be doing an edge finish. And that's gonna help us determine where we're going to fold it so we can create a nice finished edge on our under flap and our fly. So again, on this one and this one, you're gonna stitch down the side, you're gonna go over, and you're gonna make it a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge. You don't have to worry about doing the top or this area here, it's just on the side and the bottom and you're not stitching these together, go ahead and separate them and do them individually. To finish the edge stitching, what you're gonna do, and you have your stitch line right here, this is the one I just created, I'm going to fold over to the wrong side. So we're looking at the right side of my garment here, so I'm folding over to the wrong side, right along that stitch line. So your stitch line should end up right next to that crease there that you're creating right now. And then you're just gonna pin it all the way around your stitch line. So this is both on the under flap and the fly piece, just right where you did your stitching. Let me show you how to do the corner real fast. So here's the side and the bottom portion of the under flap here. And to do the corner, what I do is I just take the corner, I fold it in, and then I fold in the two sides. And we're looking at the, the wrong side. That's why I'm folding it over instead of folding it under. And that way you'll get a neater point here and you won't have to worry about it looking messy. So that's all I do. So now I'm just gonna finish pinning it and then we're gonna move on to the next step which is top stitching this all down. So to do a top stitch, right now I'm, this is my fold line that I just created. I'm just gonna do a regular stitch and stitch about an eighth of an inch away from that. So you wanna be pretty close to that, to that edge without going over your fold line. So all it's gonna do is stitch down the fold that you just created. And I'm gonna do it on both the under flap and the fly. Next, you're gonna take both your under flap and your fly, and you're gonna fold on the fold line. So this is gonna be the dotted line that was on the pattern piece. And I'm looking at the right side of my garment, so I'm folding over to the wrong side. I'm just gonna fold along that line, and I'm going to pin it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Once you have it pinned, go ahead and take it to your iron and press it. So you're gonna have a nice pressed edge. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna top stitch right along the edge, just like we did when we did our original fold when we did the edge finish. 
you're going to do the same thing now that you have this new fold and again you're going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to go ahead, pin both of them, I'm going to press it and I'm going to do the top stitch and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I folded over my under flap and my fly and I did a top stitch, which I have right here. So this is my new top stitch on my new fold line and I have my garment on the wrong side facing up. So looking at the wrong side, the next thing we're gonna do is you're going to stitch now from the top to the bottom on your old top stitch line. So here's the new one on this one that's on the inside of the garment. You're gonna stitch right along this line and you can go ahead and do a regular stitch. Don't forget to back stitch. And then once you get to this bottom corner here, let me just get make it a little higher. You have a choice. So let me remove this pin. You can just follow your line and pivot and go straight across. Or if you want it to look a little bit more professional, like professional boxers, you can go ahead and come off your line and just curve your stitch around. So that takes a little bit of finessing. So let me get this down here. And all I do is just, I just slightly curve my fabric and you can also lift your foot and move your fabric just a little bit, stitch a little further lift your foot, turn it a little bit more until you get the curve that you want. And then once you meet the stitch line at the bottom, go ahead, flatten it out and then stitch off. And don't forget to back stitch again. On one of your front pattern pieces on the fly, you're gonna see a symbol that looks like this. It looks like a, a capital I. And this is gonna be the symbol for meaning that's where we're gonna put our buttonhole. So doing a buttonhole, the first thing you need to do is change your presser foot. So this is a buttonhole presser foot, which is different than a regular foot. So make sure to put that on. And doing it on your machine, it's different for different machines. So for me, I just push a button that says buttonhole. For other people, they have a dial and you have to kind of turn the dial depending on which side of the buttonhole you're working on. So there's many different parts of the buttonhole. You have the end, you have a side, side, and then you have the end. So the first thing you're gonna do is, if you've never done buttonholes and you're a little uncomfortable with them, is practice. So I'm practicing on this scrap right here. And I'm gonna start at the end of the buttonhole. So I have, if you need to, change your dial to do end of buttonhole. I'm gonna go ahead and do the end. Okay, so the end is done. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to do the side of the buttonhole. And you see how I have this gap in the, between my foot here? I like to keep the sides right in the middle of that. So that way it's a little bit easier for me to, to stay straight. And I'm gonna go until I get to the top of my buttonhole mark. So if I'm a little unsure, I can go ahead put my needle down, lift my foot, and then check to see how far I have left to go, which I'm just about there. Go a little bit further. That should be good. I'm gonna put my needle down, lift my foot. Turn my fabric the other way. Push it for the end of the buttonhole. Do the end. Okay. And once that's done, now I'm gonna do the side again. And all I have to do is just make it to the other end and then I'm done. So after you've practiced and you're feeling comfortable, go ahead and do it on your fly. All right, so I got to my end, so that's done. So let me show you my fly. Here is a completed, let me remove this, completed buttonhole. And you just go ahead, and what I like to do is I just fold it in half, carefully with my scissors, I cut right in the middle, and that opens up the buttonhole, and that's all there is to it. 
flip your garment over to the right side. So here is my front. And if you just kind of flatten everything out and just lay everything down, you'll see that your fly overlaps the under flap right here, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to overlap. So what I like to do is after I cut open my buttonhole, I just lay everything down. I open up my buttonhole and I'll use my marker to make a dot. So then I know exactly where my button needs to be. So even if there is a button mark on the pattern, I still do this just to make sure that everything is gonna line up. So once I have that, I'm gonna put my button right over my mark. I have already some a threaded needle with a knot at the end. And I'm gonna come up from underneath because I want the knot to be hidden on the wrong side of my garment. And then I'm just going to go up through the holes, if I could find them. Sometimes it's a little hard to get started because I can't find the hole. There we go. There's one. All right, so I come up and I always go to the opposite hole. So you have to be careful when you hold it the first few times because we want to make sure that the button doesn't shift from your mark as you're sewing it. All right. So now I'm going to go to the opposite side and do a stitch. So now it looks like a little cross in the middle. So now that's going to hold it. So now the position is perfect and I can just go through each set, eh, I would say about five or six times, as long as it feels secured. And you don't want to pull your thread too tight, but it should be, it should be tight, just not super, super tight. So I'm going to go through these a few times, tie a knot in the back, and then our button and buttonhole portion of our fly is done. With the front still lined flat, what you're going to do is now baste across the top here. And I would do maybe, you know, half inch from the edge here. So this is going to keep this flap down onto the under flat part so we can start working on the rest of our boxers. So when you do a baste, you're just gonna do your largest stitch in your machine and don't worry about any back stitching. It's just a temporary stitch just to hold this down. So you're just gonna baste, boop, right across there. Then down here at the bottom of the fly, so remember how we stitched over here and we did our little curve and it flattened out? So right where it flattens out, so the edge of the fly and right where it meets the other side of our front, you're just gonna do a few stitches right across there. So it's just gonna attach the bottom portion of the fly to the other side. And this one, you can just do a regular stitch. Don't forget to back stitch here because this is gonna be a permanent stitch to tack down the fly to this side of our boxers. So right here, just stitch right across. So I'm gonna take it to the machine. I'm gonna do a baste and then I'm gonna stitch right down here. Turn your boxers back over to the inside. So at the very bottom of your flaps here, so here's my under flap, here's my fly, you're just gonna do a couple of hand stitches just to attach the two. So I just have my threaded needle again. And I'm just gonna come up from underneath. So I'm not actually going through the front of my boxers here, it's just the flaps. And then I'm just gonna go down Again, not going through the front. And you just have to do a couple of stitches. No big deal. And then tie a knot. And then we're pretty much done with the portion of working with the fly. And uh, you're gonna wanna get your back piece now because now we're gonna start attaching the back of our boxers to our front. Flip your boxers again over to the right side. So now what are we gonna do is take out these inner leg parts. So the inner leg seam is going to be where you have the short side with the notch, not this top curved part, that's our crotch, just this part right here. So again, short part, notch. So this is going to be matched up with our back pieces. So I'm gonna grab, grab one of these. And if you look at the back pieces, you'll see the same thing. We have a short side with a notch. So that's our inner leg seam of our back. So you're gonna make sure to match up the right side of the back with the right side of the front. So right sides are together. I'm going to take my inner leg seam 
and I'm going to pin it to the inner leg seam on the front of the boxers. I'm just going to match everything up and I'm going to pin it. Then after you have it pinned, you're going to take this to your machine and you're going to do a half inch seam allowance. So then I'm going to grab my other back and I'm going to do the same thing. Right sides together and I'm going to match up this inner leg seam with this inner leg piece here. Pin it and do the half inch seam allowance. Next we're going to finish the crotch seam. So here I have my inner leg seams, this is the ones I just did and don't forget that whenever you do a seam you should press it open. So the center seam of the back, that's this area here and we have the double notches. This is all going to be stitched together including up to the front. So I'm going to do this little trick here. So I'm going to hold the top of the center of the back. and you're going to end up with a shape that looks like this. Just straighten this out a little bit. So this looks quite different than how we've been looking at it before. Here is my inner leg seam here. The other one is right behind it. Both of the back pieces are together and both of the front pieces are together. So now we have this long area here. So this is our crotch area. This is where we're going to do our next seam. And here we have the fly and here's where we already started to sew the crotch seam. So we're just going to continue with that. So what you're going to do is you're going to pin the rest of this area and you're going to stitch your half inch seam allowance from here all the way till you get to the other part of your seam that you had started before. So you're going to go ahead to your half inch seam allowance. The area between the two notches, so I have a double notch here in the back and a single notch here in the front. Go ahead and stitch over your seam again. So I'm doing one seam to here and then I'm going to go right back over my seam, the same area, half inch, just between the two notches. And that's because since this is the area that gets rubbed the most, uh, you definitely want to reinforce it. So go ahead and stitch this area twice just so we have a double set of stitches to make it as strong as possible. Then once you're done with that, you can go ahead and just trim your seam allowance so you have a, about a quarter inch left. But I'll show you what that looks like after I finish stitching it. So I'm going to go ahead, pin, stitch my half inch, stitch it again between the two notches. So I finished stitching my crotch seam. And I went ahead and trimmed the area between the two notches. So here's my stitch line, here's the edge of my fabric, it's about a quarter of an inch as opposed to this side. Here's my stitch line, here's the edge of my fabric and that's at a half inch. After I finish that, we're now going to do the side seam. So I'm going to go ahead and unfold this and put it back to the way it was. So there's the front of my boxers. I'm going to lay the back on top of them. Straighten everything out. All right, so the way it's laid out now, here's the top of our boxers. This is the bottom and this is the side. So we have notches here on the sides. So we're going to go ahead and pin our front side to our back side. And your, your right side should be together so you won't have to adjust anything if you stitched everything right. I'm going to make sure that the top matches, the bottom matches, and the notch matches. So I'm going to go ahead, pin this side, and then I'm going to do this side over here and line everything up and pin it. Then I'm going to take it to my machine and I'm going to do a half inch seam allowance on both sides. And then don't forget to press your seams open and go ahead and press your seam open of your back front here. I'm sorry, your back center, not your back front, your back center seam right here and your two side seams. 
Now we're starting to get something that's starting to resemble boxers, although it may be a little bit too big, which is fine because at this point we're going to be working at the casing at the top so we can put in our elastic and start cinching it up so it'll fit you better. To start prepping for that, what we're going to need to do is on each of your seam allowances or each of your seams, you're going to need to baste on both sides of your seam or on your seam allowance. So we're attaching the seam allowance part to our boxers. So this is going to get tacked down to this. And the reason why we do it is when we create our casing and we're putting our elastic through, we don't want to have to worry about our elastic getting stuck right between the seam allowance and our boxers. So if it's stitched down, we can go ahead and just glide right over that. To do it, you're going to start at the top on one side and you're going to do your largest stitch in your machine. You don't have to worry about back stitching and you're going to baste down three inches. And you're going to do the same thing on this side. You do it on both sides. So this side and this side. And again, you're going to do this wherever you have a seam. So I do it for a side seam, side seam, and then I have one here in the back, so the back center. And I also kind of like to do it on the fly. You don't have to do it on this side because it's already stitched down, but just do it on the side that's kind of open and stitch down about three inches. So I'm going to do that and then we're going to start folding the top so we can create our casing. I'm using one inch elastic. So in my case, here we are back at the top of our waistline. You're going to fold this over onto the wrong side. So I have my, my boxers inside out and I'm just going to fold over. So this is the right side to the wrong side, one and a half inches. So once I have that, we're going to grab my pin cushion and start putting in pins. And I'm going to go all the way around the whole thing. So once you've done this, I'm going to just do one more. You're then going to take it to your um, ironing board and you're going to go ahead, press the top so we get a nice crease up here. Then you're going to go back around and on this bottom portion, you're going to turn it under a quarter of an inch. So just a little bit. So if I did one and a half, I'm just going to move my sewing gauge to one and a quarter. And that's what's going to be on the top part of my fold now. And then now I'm going to pin it down here. So you're going to have a nice crease up here and then you're going to create another crease down here on the bottom. So after I finish pinning this under a quarter of an inch, I'm going to go back and iron it again. So that way our casing is now getting prepped for us to start stitching it down and putting in the elastic. So I'm going to go ahead, do all my pinning, all my pressing, and uh, then we'll be back at the machine. When we're ready to stitch our casing close, you're going to stitch right along this folded edge here. So this is the inside fold and you're going to get as close to the edge as you can. You're going to go all the way around except for a two inch gap, which is why I have this pair of pins that are in an X. So between this set of my X's and this one right here, I'm going to leave it open. So I'm going to start here, go all the way around and then stop here. So there's no stitching here and this is how we're going to get our elastic through. So I'm just going to start over here and I'm just doing a regular with stitch. And definitely go ahead and back stitch since we're going to have an opening there. We don't want it to come undone as we're working with it. And I'm just going right alongside as close as I can to that fold line. Do my back stitches. And then just continue going around until I get to the X on the other side and then I will stop. The next step is you're going to take your elastic and whoever the boxes are for, you're going to measure around the, the area where they want the top of the boxers to rest. So in this particular case, in this style, it seems to be the consensus it's going to be the top of the hips. So for whoever these boxers are for, you're going to measure around the top of their hips, and this is my one inch elastic, so that it fits comfortably on them. Then you're actually going to cut your elastic one inch shorter than that. And the reason for that is because even though the elastic fits around them in the circumference, we need to have some stretch of the elastic when you're wearing it. So if you make it one inch too short, the elastic is going to stretch and then the boxers are going to stay up. So once you have that all cut, I'm then going to take my safety pin, put it through one end of my elastic, 
And here's my opening that I left in my casing. So now I'm going to put the safety pin side of the elastic inside the casing. And the reason why I have a safety pin is because as I'm going through the casing, it gives me something solid to grab onto. If you try to do it just with the elastic, you'll find out it gets really difficult. So that's why I have that little trick. And you'll see what you do is get that elastic in there. I hold the safety pin with one hand and then with the other hand, I gather the fabric onto the front part of the safety pin. I hold onto the top of the safety pin now with this hand, and with this hand, I pull the fabric. And you'll see that the elastic starts moving forward. So I gather it onto my safety pin, hold it with this hand, pull the fabric with this hand, and pull it through. So I just keep doing that until I'm all the way around, and I come back out through this side. Now you have to be careful though that you don't pull this all the way through. We need to at least leave a good four or five inches of elastic sticking out. So don't pull it all the way through because once we come out on this side, we're gonna need to sew the elastic ends together. So I'm just gonna finish doing this and then I will show you how to stitch the elastic. Next, you're gonna take your elastic ends and you're gonna overlap them by about a half of an inch. Just make sure that, th that you haven't twisted up your elastic and they're nice and flat because you don't want them twisted up inside your casing. So I'm gonna change my machine to a zigzag stitch. And I'm just gonna zigzag up and down about three times, three or four times. So I'm gonna go backwards. And then I'm gonna go forwards. Maybe go back one more time. So we really wanna make sure that our elastic does not come undone while it's inside the casing, because then you gotta to have to take part of the casing out and restitch it. So that's not gonna be fun. So you really wanna make sure that it's working well. All right, so that's good. So now we're ready to put the back, the rest of our elastic back inside the casing. To get the rest of our elastic back in the casing, all you have to do is stretch out the waistband and you'll see it slips right in there. Make sure this is still turned under a quarter of an inch. This is our opening. And then you just have to take it to your machine and stitch it close. So you're just gonna do right along the edge just as you did before. And once that's done, you can remove all the basting stitching you did right along the seams. And then we're gonna move on to doing the hem. I'm gonna do a narrow hem on the bottom of each of my boxer legs here. So I'm putting my sewing gauge to a half inch and on this raw edge, and I have my boxers inside out again. I'm gonna fold over. So this is the right side, this is the wrong side, a half inch. And then I'm going to pin it. And I'm gonna do this all the way around both of my pant legs. And once you have it pressed up a half inch, take it to your ironing board and iron that. So then we get this nice crease down here on the bottom. After I do that, I'm then gonna come back around again. We'll remove this pin and I'm gonna fold under Basically, I'm folding it under in half. So you're gonna end up with a quarter inch showing. So then I'm gonna do that all the way around. I'm gonna go ahead, press it again, so it's nice and neat. And then just like we did with the casing, you're going to stitch right along the top fold line. So here's my fold right here. I'm gonna be stitching right on the fold. And then that's what's gonna create our narrow hem on the bottom of our pant legs. After you've finished your hem, the only thing left to do is remove any fabric markers that you still have on your fabric and any basting stitches that are still left. After that, it's ready to wear and ready to go.